up, how do, thanks for stopping by. In this video, we're gonna have a look at this knife here uh, before and after I've done some work to it. So this has been sent to me from Singapore and it is the da -da 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 -da. Jeff Park Bones Midtech version. So if you're familiar with this knife, you know that there is the custom version, there is this Midtech version, and there is now a CRKT version. Uh, the CRKT version is aluminium, but looks very, very similar. And then you've got the Midtech version, and then you've got the custom version. Uh, the, the custom version, obviously custom, a lot of on you know it's i think it's a lot of cnc work but still a lot of hand work that goes into the custom version a lot of hand finishing whereas you know with the mid techs i don't know how much has been outsourced how much is done in-house with jeff himself what i do know is that they're all the same and you get some inconsistencies and you know it's not as perfect as a custom so the owner has sent me this to he said go wild with it so what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look around this knife and then you're going to see it as it is now and then once I've done some work to it. So this, as I say, is the mid-tech version. Titanium interlock. So it's a liner lock, but it's the, it's an interlock. Backspacer, clip, and obviously the blade. Now, the first thing we're going to notice about the blade is it's not ground properly. And this is the thing with, with it being a mid-tech. One end is slightly ground differently to the other side. And what that creates is a slight bend to the look of the blade. Can you see that? You can definitely see it in the closed position. Now that looks more off center because the pivot keeps coming loose. So I'm going to tighten it up a bit. There we go. Okay, so now you can see it's it's more centralised, but you can see that it's bent this way a little bit, and that's because it's ground slightly differently. Just one of the things with hand ground blades, but at the same time of you know a mass produced mid tech blade like this, you're gonna get those kind of inconsistencies. So I just wanted to point that out. Nothing I can do about that, but I just wanted to point out that that's the reason why it's slightly off centre. So uh, yes. The pivot keeps coming loose when I flip it. So I'm gonna to have to have a look into that. The lock bar, it's got a good lock up, but it does seem to stick a little bit. So there's a little bit of lock stick. Very, very smooth, you heard it that time. And I felt it on my finger. Yep, there you go, you heard it again. That's lock stick. Very, very smooth knife. Flips okay, but in actuality, the detent is appalling. I mean, really bad. Watch this. It is so weak. But because it's smooth, because it's a really smooth knife, if you know what you're doing, if you gave this to a novice who didn't know how to flip a knife, they would just keep doing this. That's what they would do. But when you know how to flip a knife, you know how to... <laughs> see even I did it that time but you put a bit more pressure on it and it will go now even though it does have jimping all the way around and it's smooth no harshness at all there's really no need for the jimping to be there because it's here that you flip it and you kind of roll it and light switch it at the same time so it will flip and as you can see smooth very smooth Quiken style knife where the blade is completely hidden and because of that kind of quiken style design the blade is very light at the tip so you can't really expect it to fall under its own weight and yet 
it does with a bit of a shake because it's ridiculously smooth. But the detent is very, very weak. One of the reasons for that is the detent ball is tiny. Absolutely tiny. I don't know if I can get you, get you to see it. See if you can see in the open position. There it is. See that? See in there? Look at how tiny that is. And it's also very deep into the into the hole, the way it's been hammered in. So there's really not much of a ball there. So not only is it tiny, but it doesn't fall into the detent hole very far. So you can hear that it's just very, very light. It's a very, very light detent. Will I be able to do something with that? I'm not too sure. But it's still a very, very smooth knife. So let's have a quick look around it. As you can see, what's happened is they've blasted it and then they've put it on a mach on the sander. So they've probably gone like that. And that's given you that machine satin on these flats and on the tips of the diamonds. Maybe. It looks like, you see, on the tips of the diamonds... Looks like there's maybe a slight bit of polish there, but it's these flat bits that have the machine satin. It's not a hand satin, it's just the machine satin. Just zzz, and this side is more uneven than the other side. You can also see kind of lots of micro scratches as well when you catch it in the light. And then we've got little imperfections as well. So you can see here where it's where the machining is kind of it's kind of jigged along and it's created these kind of can you see these imperfections along here okay uh, on the clip itself you've got machining marks on the sides as you can see on the edge of the knife, it's been heavily blasted. But I guarantee you that underneath these... I mean, you can see them there. Can you see the machining marks? That's what I was going to say. That if I was to get some sandpaper and just rub away the blast, that grey blast, you would just see machining marks. <laughs> This, even though it's been well machined on the presentation areas on both sides, lovely, lovely milling, lovely machine work, the edges of the handle have just been blasted. They weren't looked after beforehand. They weren't finished before being blasted. So there's lots of machine marks in there. So if I rub that away, all you're going to have is machine marks underneath. So we'll probably take care of those machine marks. Um, you know, we're going to do something, you know, different rather than boring old blast. You know, um, you know, I could just anodize it with the blast on, but the customer wants me to go a bit further than that. So we're going to try and do something a little bit more special with it. The backspacer, as you can see, was blasted and then the tips of it have been polished to give it a two-tone. But the ends have a machine, have just got machining marks. Can you see the machining marks on the end there? And then on this side, it's even worse. You've got again kind of jiggy, 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 jiggy where the machine is just jagged away and it's kind of taken a chunk out of it.
so you can see that on the end of the backspacer there so we might do something to make the ends a little bit more special that's what i like to do i like to try and focus on every area of a knife pivots are just normal pivots we may do something with them as well so yeah a few imperfections uh, some snail trails here and there a few scratches within the uh, the blast so the next time you see this knife uh, obviously in this video so I'm going to pause it go away and then come back when I've worked on it and we'll see what we're looking at all right guys stay tuned I'll be back with you in a very few seconds Welcome to part two. Now, did I customize the Jeff Parks bone? What did I do? What have I achieved? Well, I'm not going to keep you in suspense. Here we go. Bit of bang, bit of boom. Bit of bang, bit of boom, bit of boom. There we go. Nicely anodized. I went for a multicolor from blue to purple to bronze with a hand rub satin on the flats and the ends of the diamonds polished not all the way through just at the ends also polished the edges and if you saw the machining marks that i put in this video you know that it was a hell of a job to remove those machining marks but now it's all nicely polished These bits as well have been anodized, as you can see. These side vents, if you want to call them that. The backspacer polished up and anodized, and the sides have been iced. If you took that um, backspacer off, the whole thing on the side is iced, but it's just these little bits that you see, but it's iced. The clip, I left blasted, but I anodized it, uh, but I iced the edges of the clip to remove the machining marks there as well polished up the pivot it was just blasted now it's polished and like I say it's got the hand rub satin rather than a machine satin it's a hand rub satin on the flats I also polished up the flipper and the gym pin and also uh, this section here so when it sits in there that bit is polished and it matches up with the the sides as well great action i also iced up the lock bar and i chamfered it because it's a bit sticky is the lock and it was quite sharp, was the inner edge. So when you were, you know, pushing with your thumb, it kind of hurt. Now it's all rounded off. So it's much more comfortable to disengage. You see, I think of all the little details, me. So there you go. I'm happy. I think it came out great. Action is smooth. Detent is really nice. A lot of fun to play with this. Ridiculously sharp blade as well. Oof, this thing is crazy sharp. Nice there goes. Yeah. Very, very happy with how this one came out. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'll check you later.